It's been shown to reduce your lifespan and through research has shown that it's actually worse than obesity. There is a, a clear difference between loneliness and social isolation. Loneliness is actually a really common, normal emotion. You can be isolated but not necessarily feeling lonely um, and you can also be around lots of people but you can still be feeling lonely. When you're talking about data and, and facts and the research that's been done, predominantly it's looking at chronic or long-term loneliness, which we know can have a serious impact on your health. But there are some very alarming statistics in the UK, that, for instance, that there are 9 million people that often or always feel lonely. Um, there's around 200,000 older people who've reported that they, they go longer than a month without speaking to a friend or a relative. Um, and of course, more recently, we've heard about uh, younger people, so the 16 to 24 year old age group, who were talking about how they feel more often and how they feel the feeling more intensely as well. I guess the most well-known sort of statistic is that actually it's been shown to reduce your lifespan. So it's actually as bad for you as the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And research has shown that it's actually worse than obesity, which for a long time we've thought of as the high risk factor. Well, learning this point of view, it's a really interesting time for us. We're seeing over the last few weeks and months real changes in conversations around loneliness. There has been some recent research that's come out by ONS and that has shown that working age adults are actually an increased risk of, of lockdown loneliness. And out of the people that were surveyed, there was actually 7.4 million people that they reported that their well-being had been affected by loneliness. From our point of view as an organisation, and we've seen increasing conversations, but also seen people with different experiences. New parents who have talked about how they feel less socially isolated, they feel like they've got something in common uh, with everybody, they're at home, they have to access these things digitally, they're getting invites for pub quizzes and virtual meetups and, and are feeling like for the first time, that for a long time, since they've been a single parent, that they've really got a social life again. Um, and the same, we've spoken with people who have got disabilities as well. Someone we spoke to the other week is a wheelchair user and actually finds the built environment quite challenging and at the moment is doing online courses and visiting art galleries and zoos and from the comfort of her, of her own home. But obviously we do need to acknowledge that there's a huge amount of social suffering. The first thing is acknowledging it. Loneliness is usually a very normal, common emotion. But at a personal level, particularly now if you're feeling that, identify what you need. We're all different. We all need different levels of social contact. What areas of your relationships and your connections are missing? Where can you think into that? And then take some action. How can you talk to your friends, talk to your family, and see whether you can link in with some other groups, maybe volunteer. The other important thing to say is that it's looking out into the community. Who in your neighbourhood, who in your network at the moment may be experiencing higher levels of loneliness, not just now during the pandemic, but, but ongoing. Well, are there people that maybe need that extra support? Can you pop along and go and have a chat? Can you reach out to people and show that you, you do care?